Hi, I'm Chuck with IWS Sales. It's a beautiful fall morning here in Idaho and a great time to share with you this brand new Freightliner P4 Cascadia. This is the latest offering from Freightliner as well as IWS and Renegade. And it, I'm just, you know, I always say I'm excited, but I really am truly excited to share this chassis with you. Today though, we're gonna do this video a little bit differently. Normally we focus a lot on the coach and this is a beautiful coach. This is one of our customers coaches. It's 43 foot long. And we thought this would be a great platform to really show you some of the differences that are available in this new P4 chassis. As you can see, it's got a whole new aerodynamic swoopy design. It's got a really, I think a good looking grill and a front end about a front end front end look and uh, it's uh, we think it's just going to be a great success and a great hit with our customers so in keeping with the chassis theme I thought we'd just talk a little bit about the suspension all right so there's been a there's quite a bit of discussion when customers call us and discussion on the internet on whether or not you should buy tandem rear axles and by tandems, I literally mean whether you buy a motorhome with just one rear axle or whether it has two rear axles. Um, we refer to these as tandem axle or single rear axle. So what are the things that would help you make that decision? And we really feel that we gotta go with what we know. And by that, I mean, we wanna sit down with you and find out what's very important to you. Because what really will drive whether we guide you towards a tandem axle or a single starts with the wheelbase. You know, if, if you're gonna build a motorhome under 30 foot, 38 foot in length, we found that the single axle has been really the best, uh, gives you all of the best options, I guess. It gives you the best turning radius, gives you the most storage space underneath um, because a 38 footer is a lot lighter. You still have an incredible amount of stability. But if you wanna go over 38 foot, more than likely we're gonna talk or not talk you into, we're gonna really um, encourage you to go to a tandem axle. It's, it's very close to being an absolute requirement on anything over 38 foot in length. And the reason is, is when you go over 38 foot, the motorhome starts to get heavier and heavier. And we wanna make sure that we don't exceed the load carrying capability of the, of the axles, as well as the trailer you're gonna to tow. So in this configuration, this motorhome's 43 foot long. It has a gross vehicle weight rating of 58,000 pounds. So what that means is Freightliner saying, <clears throat> you can put this motorhome on a scale and it could weigh with all of its cargo up to 58,000 pounds. It also has a trailer towing capacity of up to 40,000 pounds. Now there's some variables to that and please don't criticize me too much. I'm just trying to talk in general terms here and keep this kind of understanding. When you go to a single rear axle, you go to a 20,000 pound towing capacity on the back. And all of that is based on the design components, the ability of the motorhome to stop, the carrying capacity of the rear axle. So I'm gonna back up. When you're in a tandem axle configuration like this, we can put up to 40,000 pounds of weight on the rear axles. When we go to a single rear axle, that gets reduced to a total of 23,000 pounds. So everything depends on the length of motorhome as well as the trailer you want to haul. And then the next thing we need to know as we move forward and I move back up here towards the engine is we need to know what are your driving habits? You know, out here in Idaho, the speed limit's 80 miles an hour. So I needed a coach. I went to the top. I went with a 16 liter Detroit with a 600 horsepower. I tend to drive the speed limit or crowd it just a little bit. Some people have different driving habits, but again, everything stops and starts with the floor plan. 
like on this particular coach, the customer wanted a 43 foot floor plan. So what we chose was the Freightliner Cascadia 116. So currently right now, what we're offering in the Freightliner Cascadia P4 chassis is two styles. One of them is the 116, which you see here. And that just means that from the back of the cab to the front bumper, it's 116 inches. In that configuration, the biggest engine we can put in it is the Detroit DD13, which is in this one and it produces 505 horsepower and 1,850 foot-pounds of torque. Now, if this customer wasn't concerned about length, we could go to the Cascadia P4 126 chassis and that's 126 inches. So it has a 10 inch longer hood. By going with the 10 inch longer hood, we can step up to the Detroit DD16, and that's offered in 600 horsepower and 1,850 foot-pounds of torque. Both extremely competent engine. One produces more horsepower than the other. One has a longer hood than the other, so the visibility and all those factors change. So hopefully that helped you out. Freightliner st uh, stayed consistent with a really nice grab handle and the steps. Uh, your fuel tanks and your diesel exhaust fluid are located here. For those of you that don't know, you'll put the diesel in here and DEF or diesel exhaust fluid is a secondary solution that you'll get at, uh, at most of the truck stops have it at the pump, and you're gonna put this diesel exhaust fluid in here. And on my motorhome, I have to fill this tank up about every third to fifth tank full. So it's not something that you have to do on every tank. And there's just no way getting around it. Now I just wanna go ahead and let Zach pan around. You can see this has uh, LED headlights on it. It's got some really nice driving lights down low painted front bumper. This chrome grille is really nice. I think the uh, hood accents and stuff and the aerodynamics, we're fully expecting to see uh, fuel mileage increases on this as well as just performance noted because you have a smoother, uh, slipperier product as it's traveling down through the freeway. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the hood on this thing and there's just a, a lever on each side of the hood Okay, I'm, I'm gonna make this nice and easy, you ready? Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and just tilt the hood back. Then the hood's on gas shock absorber, so it tilts over really nice. And here we are, we're looking in at this uh, DD13, which is 12.8 liter engine. I wanna tell you a little bit about these engines is the, this engine now has a B50 life rating of over a million miles. And, Basically what that's saying is that this engine has the ability, or most, over 50% of these engines that Detroit has produced has proven that they'll go over a million miles without any major engine repairs. Oil changes on these can be anywhere from 20 to 35,000 miles depending on uh, the environment they're in. Everything's very accessible. You got easy access to the oil dipstick, power steering reservoir, it's all right here. Um, everything's just completely accessible. So one of the neat things why I really wanted to move to a Class C early on is coming from a towing background. You know, IWS actually stands for Idaho Wrecker Sales. We, we made our start for the first 25 years just by selling tow trucks and servicing them. We like to tell our RV customers, we don't believe anybody in the United States has more connections in the towing community as it relates to having your RV towed than we do. We definitely are a company that can keep you running no matter where you are. Brings me back to some customers say, well, you know, I'm from Texas uh, or Michigan or, you know, Nevada or wherever it may be, how will I get service? And I always say, you know, typically your motorhome never breaks down in your backyard. It always breaks down when you're on the road away from home. And when you buy a coach from us, we provide you with our IWS Advantage package. And it's an exclusive iPad that has private videos that are for our customers only. But on top of that, 
you get access to our crew 24 hours a day, seven days a week to help you when they're on the road. And that's something that is very important to me and my family. In fact, just last weekend, we were with our motorhome up in uh, Washington and we had a little bit of a, uh, of a hiccup there. I actually let the batteries go dead and I was struggling to get the generator to start. And it was so nice. My wife commented that she knows now what our customers must go through, but we were able to pick up the phone, call our shop in just a few minutes. They had us fired up and running on down the road again. But getting back to these power plants and, and what this chassis is designed to do is, I like to say it's more chassis than you have motorhome. And it's something that, you know, you really need to go through the driving experience of one of these to, to really understand what it's all about. But I guess the thing that I want you to know is when you buy one of these, you're in a little bit different world. I started this conversation talking about towing. so. I challenge you to call a towing company and just say, hey, I have a 43 foot long class A motorhome and I need to get it towed. Odds are you won't be able to find a towing company um, within several hundred miles unless you're in a major city that'll actually tow a class A motorhome. They don't want no part of them. There's just no good places to attach. If you call them with one of these, it's no different than when they go out and hook onto a regular semi. The front axle has attachment points on it. It's very easy to tow them. When it comes to service, many people or many shops charge more when they work on a Class A motorhome because they have to climb into the rear engine compartment and, and it's just not very fun. When you look at one of these, it's service just like any other truck. Most of the Freightliner dealers offer seven day a week, 24 hour a day truck service. So you're entering into a whole different level of customer service that, that really we don't feel exists in the Class A market. And that's something we feel good about, you know, coaching our customers in that direction. Well, I know I'm going on and on about the engine, but as I said, this is all about this chassis. But now we're gonna go ahead and go inside and talk about the inside. So here we go. Well, I wanna invite you on inside of this beautiful quad slide motorhome. This motorhome's already sold. The customer was nice enough to let us use it to film uh, so we could show their chassis off a little bit. But as Zach uh, pans around in here, you can see that this is a all natural maple interior. I think it really gives just a great contrast and it really brightens up the inside of the coach. This is definitely a look that uh, I'm a huge fan of. As you can see, we did opposing slides. So this has a full wall slide on the driver's side and a smaller side on the kitchen side. Also have uh, theater chairs as well as a, a small love seat. And then the TV's on a televator behind it. This floor plan's getting more and more popular. It's, it's quite a package in a small 43 foot uh, footprint. We're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on the inside of this coach because today's video is all about the chassis, but we thought we'd just go ahead and start with just this kind of overall uh, walk through of this coach so you can get a feeling for it. Okay, now we're gonna move towards the rear of the coach and give you a quick overview of the bathroom and let you take a look around in here. And the whole purpose of this is just to kind of show you that you know, what the colors look like and how the layout is of this particular coach. In this coach, the customer opted to not have a washer and dryer and instead had us fill the, the area up with these shelves so they can have lots of linen or, you know, a larger pantry area. Again, when you work with us here at IWS, we design your coach, we're not designing ours. So anything you want uh, within reason is what we're gonna try to do for you. Now we're gonna open the door into the private toilet area. As you can see, we're using the macerator toilet in it and anybody that's been watching our videos knows we're, know that we're huge fans of the, this type of, of toilet. It's porcelain, it's at a nice height that has digital flushing capabilities, water saver modes. It emulsifies all the byproduct up as before it sends it down to the tank. And we've had just an exceptional luck with this product. I'm definitely a fan. In fact, I use it in my own motorhome. All right, now as we go into the 
bedroom on this coach, we really just kind of wanted to show you some different options. So this customer opted for no rear window. And they went with a textured wall fabric, which I think just adds a really nice texture level to the coach. You can also see that they've gone with the uh, TV and everything uh, mounted a little bit differently than we normally do in the wall slide or the wardrobe slide. Everything on this coach was done to increase storage capacities. This customer wanted lots of storage. And one of the things that's new for IWS this year is we've hired our own mechanical engineer and we're creating virtual tours and of, of your dream motorhome. So if you wanna build a custom coach, we believe we're the only company in the United States or in the world that's offering this type of service. So you can work with one of our designers online or come here in person and we're gonna put this mechanical engineer with you and we're gonna design your motor home in virtual reality so that we can work on your cabinet space, you know, storage and really develop things that are you. We're even rendering uh, color graphics so we can tell you what your motor home is gonna look like and that's just really our commitment to the industry and to our customers. We've also uh, recently hired somebody and their only job is to really continue to enhance the customer's experience. We really want you to come to our place and just have an incredibly wonderful experience designing your coach, fulfilling your dream. And, and then sticking with you throughout your journey as you own your coach. It's something we're quite proud of. Well, now that we've kind of done a quick overview of the coach, we're gonna walk up here and really try to show you a, a little bit about what to expect with this new Cascadia P4 chassis. As you know, I'm a, or maybe you don't know, but I'm a right at six foot tall. And so there's plenty of room to walk in here and, and sit down inside of this coach. So let's talk about some of the changes. And obviously you can see that the whole, the dash, everything has been redesigned for this, uh, the 2021 P4 model gear. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up the steering column and you have a pretty good range of motion. It'll telescope in, telescope out, and then you can adjust it up and down. So I'll try to keep it in the best position to show you uh, most of the functions. Oh. Over here, you can actually answer your telephone. You can hang up your telephone. You have your uh, cruise controls, as well as light controls all function here. You also have a, a pages control button that will change the page views on the center console or on the gauge cluster. When you go through these pages, I hope you can see it there on the dash, but there's a lot of different functions on it, but one that's kind of interesting is this is cruise control. So this does have adaptive cruise control on it. And when you get into this function, you can see that it says follow distance 3.6 seconds, 3.2. So you can increase and decrease how far of a distance you are before the active braking starts taking control. You can also control the engine idle here. Um, adjust it up or down here I'm idling the engine up and you know you may want to do that if you're charging up the batteries if you're just sitting somewhere stationary uh, you can cancel that out and you can go through uh, a bunch of other um, options on this okay now we're going to talk a little bit about this side over here so there's a lot of functions so Right now, we're gonna go ahead and scroll across. Now we're into the diagnostic section. Section, So it's telling us the oil life is at 100%. There's no active alerts. There's onboard engine diagnostics. Tells you when the engine maintenance is due. Um, we can go to the vehicle settings right here, control all of those. We can look at uh, different page view of the oil gauges, the temperature, turbo boost. You can go to a digital speedometer if you want. Um, you can use this to help with your uh, lane keeping abilities, trip mileage, 
All of those functions are available to you right here on the steering wheel. Another neat thing, and I'm gonna turn the wheel a little bit and hopefully Zach can see this. And this is the new shifting uh, assembly. So this controller does an, an awful lot. I'm sure there's a fancy name for this, but the first thing to do is that you can put it in drive, neutral, or reverse right here. But what I think is really neat is you can also switch it to manual shift mode or automatic mode. And if you want to manually shift the transmission, you can progress through the gears by pulling up or by pushing down. So that's kind of a neat function. But probably the ultimate function is the, the engine brake on it. And you do that by, the, if you want to turn the engine brake on, you pull it down, now the engine brake is on and each level controls the amount of engine braking. So you have the lowest level, then the medium, and then the highest level of engine braking. And then you just push this up to turn it on or off. And this is something that we're already getting feedback that people really like having this right here at their, at their hand controls. So you have door lock and unlock, window up and down right here. You have your power mirror controls, left and right power mirror controls, and mirror heat controller right there. You also have really nice grab bars, and our crew is putting in a new speaker system, so we're really trying to upgrade the performance of the stereo. So this is the new Garmin navigation, and what's pretty neat about this is you can take it right off of the dash, and you can take it into a restaurant with you, you can take it into the back of the coach, it's really neat. We have a lot of, uh, I don't know, uh, not hope, but we believe that the passenger will be using this quite a bit. So you can just take this, touch the navigation screen. There we are in the motorhome right now, sitting in our driveway. You can zoom in, uh, zoom out. There's turn by turn. There's all kinds of functions that are available. Um, your average speed, how long it's going to take you to get there. But there's a lot of other functions that are available on this. You can go to the app store and you can download a traffic app. We don't have it loaded yet. They have a weather app that you can load right on here. You can sync your telephone to this. And we just think this is going to be just a great new technology for the future. And it magnetically holds itself right into position. So I'm gonna quickly walk you through some of these gauges and we'll go ahead and start over here. So here's your transmission temperature. And these two are pretty important. This is the rear brakes and the front brakes and, it, and this is an application gauge. So these trucks put out right out 120 PSI air pressure. So right now we're at zero, which means we're using zero percentage of our brakes. Now as I step on this, if I was to go up to 30 PSI, I'm using um, divided by four, so I'd be using one fourth of the braking ability of the coach. If I take it all the way up to 60 PSI, I'm using half of the braking function. Well, actually this gauge is running up to 100. So at 50 PSI, I would be using 50% in theory of the brakes, the available braking power. So it's kind of a neat little gauge to have there. Here's your uh, fan control, your temperature control, and obviously the selector control. You have a 12 volt power outlet, a cigarette lighter. These are cell phone holders. This is for your truck camera. And if you have a trailer, we can hook a camera up to the trailer. This is your USB port. So you could uh, sync your phone directly if you don't want to use Bluetooth. Here's your air ride, which raises and lowers the rear air suspension. Because this is a tandem, it has two locking differentials. So when you push these in, it interlocks, locks both wheels together. So you have a true four wheel drive. Engine override. Something I haven't talked about a lot on this coach is it does have lane departure warning. Now it's not going to control the steering wheel, but it does notify you if you're beginning to drift in and out of the lane. It also has adaptive cruise control on it. So it's going to keep you the set distance from somebody but it also has collision mitigation on it. And there's some great videos on there from Meritor and they really show 
and I have it on my coach, if somebody's at a stop and you miss it, it might give you one to two seconds early. It's going to start applying the brakes automatic. And, and we've had overwhelming response from customers saying how much that the system has really meant to them. And in one instance, the customer is very adamant that it may have saved their life. So we're real excited to be offering this collision mitigation system on our on these premier motor coaches. Automatic traction control is just that. It's gonna help aid in, in traction, so you can leave this on if the roads were wet or snowy. Docking lights are the lights back by the rear wheels. You have a dome light, a light in the footwell. This is the regen, and this is a light test. So you can push this button and go outside the motorhome and walk around it and watch the computer as it cycles through all of the lighting. All right, you also have overhead compartment above the, the driver and the passenger. You've got a laptop storage area up here, which is pretty important to me, so I can bring my laptop down and work, <laughs> not while I'm driving. And there's a CB area and also more storage up there. You'll also notice that this customer opted for a second backup camera rather than having it down here. I think this is a pretty great idea. You'll have your navigation on as well as your backup camera at the all time. Again, you know, everything we do is about options. And, you know, I hope as our company grows and, and you know, maybe as I start to remove myself from the business that we never lose sight of what's important. And that is you. And what's important is that we build your coach. This isn't ours. We're not going to be living in it. And, and we really just want to make sure that we're doing all we can to try to inform you and make sure that you're aware of, of all the benefits and features that are available to you on these coaches. As always, thank you so much for your time and I hope to see you out on the road.